Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Last class, we discussed about PR interval. After PR interval, we'll see what happens in, what are the abnormalities you can see in QRS complex. Today, we'll be discussing only about the width of the QRS complex. Height of the QRS complex, we'll be discussing in some other day. So, you know that QRS complex is produced by the activation of ventricle. You can see from SA node to current come to AV node. From AV node, it goes to the uh, uh, ventricle. There you have right bu uh, bundle and left bundle. So when it is going through a normal pathway like this, the QRS complex will be narrow. It will be less than three divisions, three small divisions. So the QRS complex total width will be less than three small divisions. When there is a problem in the conduction pathway in the ventricle, it, it may become wide. It can become wide and sometimes it may be more than three small squares. So we'll see what are the common abnormalities here. Last class we discussed about Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. That's an accessory pathway. There you get wide QRS complex. But here we are going to discuss about right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block. Right bundle branch block means the block in the right part of the bundle. Normally, when we are taking ECG in emergency room, many patients you can see right bundle branch block. This is not actually a significant problem. Many patients who are absolutely normal, they can have right bundle branch block. Like somebody, a young individual coming to emergency room when they are taking an ECG, if you are seeing right bundle branch block, it is normal. But somebody is having severe chest pain, uh, who is having breathlessness, possibility of pulmonary embolism. If you are seeing a right bundle branch block, then that may be due to the pulmonary embolism. <laughs> Somebody is having COPD, right ventricular enlargement, they also can have right bundle branch block. But right bundle branch block as such without any clinical feature, it is normally uh, a normal phenomenon seen in many uh, normal person. So we will see what is right bundle branch block. So when there is a block in the right bundle, you can get a typical pattern. P wave is there. Then there is a small R wave in V1. We are seeing the V1. Small R wave in V1. Then S wave. Then a larger R wave. Then ST depression, T wave inversion. This all happens in uh, V1. Normally we are seeing V1. What we are seeing is a P wave. Then a small R wave. Then S wave, then a slight, this one, uh, it may not go up, then T wave upright. But here what you are seeing is a small R wave that is uh, R, S, R dash. This R, S, R dash pattern in V1 is a typical feature of right bundle branch block. Because of this block, the QRS complex will become wider, more than three squares, three small squares. And following that ST depression, T wave inversion. So when you are seeing in the V1, you can see here R, S, R dash pattern, ST depression, T wave inversion. If you see the V6, V6 leads, you can see a small Q wave and an R wave, then S wave. This is a typical pattern of RBBB. But if the patient is absolutely normal in RBVB, no need to worry. As a normal phenomenon, many patients who, who are normal, you can get RBVB. But if the patient is having uh, clinical features of pulmonary embolism, like chest pain, breathlessness, who had DVT and all, then it may be a significant problem. So RBVB, we have learned. Now we'll see what is LBVB. LBVB is a block in the left bundle. Left bundle branch block is classically observed in ischemic heart disease. Somebody is coming with severe chest pain. If you are seeing left bundle branch block, then that may be due to acute MI. Otherwise also somebody is having chronic ischemic heart disease, they can have LBVB. Or patient is having degenerative heart disease, they can have LBVB. Hypertensive heart disease, cardiomyopathies, left ventricular enlargement, all these things you can get LBV. But in emergency room, the most important cause for LBV is ischemic heart disease. Suppose somebody coming with severe chest pain, 
previous ecg is available that was normal now you are seeing a acute left bundle branch block that should be taken as acute myocardial infarction so lbbb is never a uh, physiological phenomenon it's a pathological phenomenon this patient has to be admitted but rbbb most of the time it's a normal uh, variant in ecg it does not uh, have any major pathology behind that now we'll see what is lbbb so we have already seen rbb r s r dash pattern st depression t wave inversion now we'll see what is lbbb pattern so right right bundle branch block predominant change was in v1 but left bundle branch block predominant change was it will be in the v6 so v6 you can see here there is an m pattern m pattern means qrs p wave is there qrs complex is void then there is a notch in the qrs complex st depression t wave inversion you are seeing it here p wave is there pr interval is normal notch in the qrs complex it looks like a m m shaped and there is st depression t wave inversion what you should remember is if the qrs complex is positive st has to be negative in left bundle branch block it is like that this is called as discordant pattern discordant means qrs complex is positive st is negative same change same type of change that is lbbb another pattern is w pattern you can see here qrs complex is negative but st is upright this is also discordant this discordant pattern is normal in uh, left bundle branch block so normally when you are seeing a left bundle branch block most of the lbbb is like a, like m pattern there is st depression t wave inversion rarely you can get w pattern that is negative qrs complex with a notch but st is upright but remember if you are seeing like this so now what you have seen is uh, p wave qrs uh, qrs is like m pattern but there is upright t wave this is called as concordant pattern both on the same side qrs is upright st segment and t wave also operate this is typical of myocardial infarction or when you have a finding like this remember it is due to ischemic heart disease so two important findings we learned we know that qrs complex is originated from the ventricular activation it is always less than small three small squares if it is wide two important differential diagnosis right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block right bundle branch bundle branch block as a typical feature in v1 you have r s r dash pattern following that st depression t wave inversion in a complete bundle branch block the qrs complex is duration is more than 3 small squares if it is narrow then you can call it as incomplete rbbb whereas left bundle branch block v1 will be rs pattern like this but v6 will be m pattern following that st depression t wave inversion this is called as discordant type of uh, change but both are on the same side m pattern with upright t this is called as concordant concordance is always pathological this is due to ischemic heart disease lbbb has got lot of uh, uh, lot of uh, diseases can produce lbbb including ischemic heart disease acute myocardial infarction Uh, left uh, left ventricular enlargement uh, hypertensive heart disease so many things can produce lbbb so lbbb can be due to uh, ischemic heart disease it it mostly this is m pattern following that st depression t wave inversion rarely you can see w pattern but qrs will be on the opposite side both are upright or downward this is called as concordance concordance is a typical feature of ischemic heart disease now another cause for wide qrs complex is wpw syndrome the last time we learned it wpw syndrome means and there is an accessory pathway here or here you can see accessory pathway through accessory pathway when it goes the pr interval will be shorter and there is a slurring in the upslope of the qrs this actually qrs is not that wide only the lower part of the qrs is wide there is a slurring in the upslope of the qrs complex this is called as delta wave whatever it is there also you get a wide qrs complex 
Now, last one is when single ventricular complex is void, you can call it as ventricular ectopic. More than three consecutive, uh, consecutive uh, complex are void, then it will become ventricular tachycardia. So, we are not discussing that since we are telling about wide QRS complex, I told three important causes of wide QRS complex. One is RBBB, other one is LBBB, third one is WPW syndrome. Then VT we will discuss in detail in some other class. So, these are the three important complex reasons for wide QRS complex, RBBB, LBBB and WPW syndrome. We will see what is the clinical importance of all these things. RBBB is mostly uh, benign, but patients who is having pulmonary embolism or COPD with the core pulmonary, they can have RBBB. WP is, uh, w is sorry, uh, LBBB is always pathological. Most of the time it is due to ischemic heart disease. Acute LBBB is acute MI or a concordant pattern is also normally indicates towards ischemic heart disease. WPW syndrome is an accessory pathway. The problem of WPW syndrome is it can produce supraventricular tachycardia with wide complex rhythm. So any of this problem like you have patient who is having RVBB, you have patient who is having LBBB, you have patient who is having WPW syndrome, you have patient who is having uh, VT, all these patients will have a uh, wide QRS complex and when they go for a tachycardia, like supraventricular tachycardia, that also will become wide complex tachycardia. Normally, supraventricular tachycardia means narrow complex tachycardia. But when the patient is having associated conditions like this, these patients can have wide QRS complex tachycardia. So, wide complex tachycardia, if you are having, you have three important differential, so four important differential diagnosis. Supraventricular tachycardia with RBVB, supraventricular tachycardia with LBVB, supraventricular tachycardia with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome or VT. So, that is the importance of learning all these basics. So, treatment for all these things are different. VT, uh, VT treatment is different, SVT with uh, WPW syndrome is different, SVT with uh, uh, LBVB or RBB all also can be different. But according to ACLS protocol, if you have a wide QRS complex tachycardia, most of the time amidron is the drug of choice. If the patient is unstable, we go for different type of treatment. So we have discussed about wide QRS complex. Normally QRS complex is narrow, less than 3 squares. If it is wide, these are the causes. Thank you.